Anastasia Gray drove slowly down the streets of her childhood neighborhood, watching the familiar, weather-worn buildings pass by. It had been years since she'd last set foot here, yet every corner held memories that felt freshly imprinted in her mind. The tall trees lining the road, the fading paint on once bustling storefronts, and even the stoic faces of longtime residents gave this area a sense of frozen time. But there was a new feeling here too, a current of tension that pulsed under the surface something sharper, darker. For Anastasia, this place wasn't just a nostalgic echo, it was now a battleground, and she was here on a mission. Anastasia was no ordinary visitor. In the years since she'd left, she'd risen to the top of her field, building a tech empire specializing in cutting-edge security systems and advanced data analytics. Her company's reach extended far beyond the private sector, securing government contracts, partnerships with law enforcement, and even collaborations with military organizations. Her team was a carefully chosen group of elite analysts, engineers, and operatives whose mission was to expose corruption and safeguard against abuses of power. They were known for their results, and yet no one knew the full extent of their work or who exactly orchestrated it. Today, Anastasia wasn't here to cut a ribbon or meet with investors, she was here to launch a secret operation. This small town, her hometown, had garnered whispers of corruption within its police department, complaints of racial profiling, excessive force, and cover-ups. Many of the officers were rumored to be engaged in extortion, racketeering, and even drug trafficking. The police department had become a shadow organization of sorts, preying on the very people it was meant to protect. Anastasia had decided to make this her personal project, a hidden campaign to bring accountability and reform. No one knew that she was at the helm of this endeavor, and no one could ever know until it was all over. Dressed in understated clothing, a dark, tailored coat and simple jeans, Anastasia was almost unrecognizable. She drove an older model car instead of one of her luxury vehicles, understanding that discretion was essential. Her plan was to spend the next few days gathering first-hand data, carefully documenting patrol patterns, officer behavior, and potential hotspots of misconduct. Her notebook lay open on the passenger seat, filled with meticulous observations from the last two days. She had taken every precaution, including using custom surveillance equipment embedded in her glasses to capture footage without drawing attention. She was focused, prepared, and unafraid. She had spent years building herself up for a moment like this. As she pulled up to an intersection in one of the neighborhood's more worn-out areas, Anastasia noted the presence of several police cars idling nearby. Officers stood in small clusters, exchanging looks with passers-by who quickly averted their eyes. Her mind registered the tension immediately, recognizing the fear simmering under the surface of these interactions. She took mental notes, cataloging everything with a sharp eye honed from years of fieldwork and research. Just as she turned her gaze back to the road, a figure approached her car a police officer with a stern, unwelcoming expression that matched his rigid posture. She immediately recognized him. Officer Thomas Wilson, She'd researched him extensively over the last few months. He had a reputation as one of the most ruthless officers in the precinct, known for his heavy-handed approach to anyone he deemed suspicious. Wilson was a veteran in the force, and his years on the job had seemingly only deepened his prejudices. Anastasia knew he had received multiple complaints from residents for excessive force and verbal abuse, Yet he was still here, still patrolling with the confidence of a man who had never faced any real consequences. Wilson approached her car, his expression darkening as he took in her face. What's a fancy-looking lady like you doing around here? He sneered, his tone loaded with judgment. Anastasia remained calm, sensing the hidden danger in his words. She responded with controlled politeness her eyes steady. 
I'm just here on some business, she replied, her voice smooth and unthreatening. Business? In this part of town? He laughed derisively, glancing around as if looking for an audience. His demeanor was a mix of amusement and suspicion, as though her presence here were a personal affront to his authority. People like you don't just hang out here. Or maybe I should be asking whose business you're really here on, he added, his tone growing more pointed, his hand casually resting on his belt. Anastasia held his gaze, her mind quickly calculating her next move. She could sense his hostility simmering just below the surface. He wanted to intimidate her, maybe even humiliate her. I'm here for personal reasons, she answered, her calmness unwavering. I have a few things to take care of, and then I'll be on my way. Wilson's expression shifted, a glimmer of anger flashing in his eyes as he leaned in closer. Funny. That's what they all say. But you don't fool me. You people think you can walk into places you don't belong and act like you own it. He sneered, his words dripping with contempt. Anastasia felt a surge of anger rise within her, but she held it back, her face remaining impassive. This wasn't the time to escalate she needed to let him make his move first. With all due respect, officer, I'm not causing any trouble here, she replied coolly, her eyes sharp, assessing. If you don't mind, I'd like to get back to what I was doing. Wilson took another step closer, his sneer widening as he sensed her defiance. He was itching for an excuse to assert his authority, to teach her a lesson. Trouble? You're here, aren't you? His voice took on a darker edge as he leaned forward, his face mere inches from hers. You think you're untouchable, don't you? Just because you look like you've got money. Anastasia met his gaze head on, her expression unyielding. I'm here because I have every right to be, she replied. If there's a problem, officer, you're welcome to explain it. Otherwise, I'd appreciate if you gave me some space. For a brief second, Wilson's facade cracked, his expression contorting in frustration. He wasn't used to being challenged, and her calm resistance only seemed to enrage him further. He straightened up, his tone turning colder, harsher. Watch yourself, lady. This isn't your fancy office, and you're not in charge here. Anastasia nodded, acknowledging his threat but remaining silent. She knew he wouldn't let her go that easily. He was pushing for a reaction, and she could see the satisfaction in his eyes as he waited, anticipating her anger or fear. But she wouldn't give him the satisfaction. She was here on a mission, and she wouldn't let a corrupt officer disrupt her plans. Wilson paused, a smirk creeping onto his face as he finally stepped back. I'll be watching you, he muttered, as if savoring the last word, before he turned and walked away. Anastasia watched him go, her heart steady, her resolve stronger than ever. This was just the beginning. The more they tried to silence her, the more determined she became. She took a deep breath, her mind already calculating her next move. She would see this mission through, no matter the obstacles. And Officer Wilson would soon realize he had underestimated the woman he had just tried to intimidate. Anastasia watched Officer Wilson walk away, his smug expression lingering in her mind. She knew he was the type who thrived on exerting power over others, someone who saw strength in intimidation rather than integrity. It was exactly the kind of behavior her project aimed to expose and dismantle. As he receded into the distance, Anastasia took a deep breath, centering herself. She was here for a purpose, and one belligerent officer wasn't going to sway her from it. She turned her attention back to her notes, writing observations on her clipboard, her pen moving swiftly across the paper. Her eyes were sharp, scanning the area as she resumed documenting the patterns and behaviors she observed. A few minutes passed, the calm returning as she focused on her task, 
her mind calculating the best ways to gather and compile evidence for the larger operation. Just then, she felt a shadow loom over her once again. Officer Wilson had returned, and this time his face was devoid of the mocking smile. He looked angry, as if her calm and composed reaction to his threats had somehow bruised his ego. Excuse me, lady, but I think I asked what you were doing here, he said, his tone louder, rougher than before. His posture was stiff, his hand resting on his belt, fingers lightly tapping near his service weapon, as if ready to make a point. Anastasia glanced up at him, meeting his gaze without a trace of fear. She remained seated in her car, one hand on her clipboard, the other on her lap, deliberately showing she was unafraid and unmoved by his intimidation tactics. Officer, I already told you. I'm here on business, she responded, her voice calm but edged with a firmness that made it clear she wouldn't tolerate any further harassment. I have every right to be here. Business, huh? Wilson sneered leaning in closer. And what business would someone like you have around here? Last I checked, you people don't usually show up in this part of town unless you're looking for trouble. Anastasia's eyes narrowed slightly. She could feel the rage simmering in her chest, but she held it back, determined not to give him the reaction he was fishing for. Someone like me? She repeated slowly, raising an eyebrow. Wilson's smirk returned, pleased by what he assumed was her confusion or discomfort. Yeah, you know what I mean. Fancy car, expensive clothes, acting like you own the place. He tilted his head, inspecting her. People like you think you can waltz in any way you want and do as you please. But let me remind you, lady, this isn't your playground. You don't make the rules here. Anastasia sighed closing her notebook with a snap and placing it on the passenger seat. She turned fully to face him, her expression neutral but unyielding. I'm aware of the rules, Officer Wilson. Perhaps better than you are. Her composed response only seemed to agitate him further. He straightened up, drawing himself to his full height as if to loom over her, his face hardening into a scowl. Listen, lady, I don't know who you think you are, but your attitude here isn't going to fly. If you know what's good for you, you'll answer my questions properly, or I'll have to assume you're hiding something. She let a slight smirk appear, unable to resist a jab that she knew would get under his skin. The only thing I'm hiding, officer, is my patience, she replied coolly. So if you're trying to scare me, you'll need to try a lot harder. Wilson's face darkened, his eyes flashing with anger. He took another step closer, his voice low but dripping with contempt. You think you're clever, don't you? But you're not fooling anyone. People like you come around acting like you're untouchable. Well, you're not. Not here. And if you don't show some respect, you'll find out just how serious I am. Anastasia leaned back in her seat meeting his gaze with a calmness that seemed to unsettle him further. Respect, she echoed. Respect is earned, officer, not demanded. And from what I've seen, you don't exactly inspire it. The muscles in his jaw clenched, and he reached down, opening her car door and gesturing for her to step out. That's it, he growled. Step out of the car. I think you're in need of a little lesson. She raised an eyebrow, unperturbed, but decided it was time to comply for now. Slowly she gathered her belongings, slipped her pen into her pocket, and calmly exited the car. She could sense his simmering anger, feel the tension between them thickening with each passing second. Once she was standing, Wilson looked her up and down, his lip curling in disdain. You got ID? he demanded and I don't mean some fake business card. I mean a real ID, proving who you are and why you're here. Anastasia reached into her coat pocket, pulling out her identification, her movements slow and deliberate. She handed it to him without a word, watching as he inspected it, his eyes flickering with something unreadable as he read her name. Anastasia Gray, 
he murmured, as if testing the name on his tongue. Doesn't ring a bell. And what exactly is your business here, Miss Gray? His voice was thick with sarcasm, as if he didn't believe a word of what she'd said. Anastasia held her ground, her gaze steady. As I said, officer, my business is my own. Now, if you're finished, I'd like to continue with my day. He handed back her ID with a sneer, but his tone held a note of frustration. Listen here, Miss Gray. I don't care who you are or how important you think you are. Around here, people follow the law, and that includes you. So don't think you can come here and throw your weight around. I've dealt with types like you before, and I know your game. Anastasia let out a soft, incredulous laugh. My game? Officer, if you only knew. My game is so far beyond your understanding that you wouldn't even begin to grasp it. Her words hit him like a slap. His face reddened, and he stepped even closer, close enough that she could see the fury in his eyes. You're treading on thin ice, lady, he said, his voice low and dangerous. One more word out of line, and I'll show you exactly what happens when you mess with the wrong people. Funny, she replied, her voice equally low, mirroring his tone. That's exactly what I was about to say. He stared at her, the two of them locked in a silent standoff. She could see the barely contained rage simmering behind his eyes, a tempest waiting for the smallest spark to ignite it. And she had no intention of backing down. If he wanted to escalate, she would let him do so, and she would be ready. Is that a threat? He growled, his fists clenching at his sides. She smiled, a slow, unyielding smile that held no warmth. No, officer, it's a promise. Her words hung in the air between them, charged and potent, filling the space with a tension so thick it was almost tangible. For a moment she thought he might actually take a swing at her, but instead he took a step back, his face twisted in anger and humiliation, clearly realizing he'd been outplayed. The street had fallen into silence, save for the faint hum of distant traffic. Officer Thomas Wilson stood inches from Anastasia, his entire posture radiating tension and anger. She could see that her confidence had wounded his ego, and his eyes held the look of a man who wouldn't let her walk away so easily. This was more than just a routine stop now. It was personal, and Anastasia could tell he was determined to make her regret her defiance. Without warning, Wilson reached out and grabbed her by the arm, his fingers pressing into her skin with unnecessary force. I told you you don't belong here, he spat, his face close to hers, his voice laced with anger. And you're about to learn what happens when people don't respect the law around here. Anastasia's eyes met his unflinching, even as pain shot through her arm. She didn't resist, she wanted to see how far he would take it, wanted to document every second of his aggression. The small hidden camera embedded in her glasses recorded everything the way his face twisted with anger, the way his grip tightened like he was daring her to fight back. Is this how you treat everyone, officer? She asked, her voice steady and cold. Or am I just special? Wilson's grip tightened further, his face darkening as he leaned in closer. You think you're funny, don't you? Acting all high and mighty. But I know your type. Just because you've got some fancy car and a smug look on your face, you think you're above the rules. Anastasia could feel her patience wearing thin, but she kept her expression calm, her voice even. No, Officer Wilson, she replied. I just think that people like you shouldn't be wearing a badge. Her words had the effect of a slap. His face contorted with fury, and without warning, he shoved her back against the side of her car. She stumbled but kept her balance, her eyes narrowing as she saw the wild look in his eyes. Careful, officer, she said, her voice low. You're only making things worse for yourself. Worse for myself, he sneered his voice laced with sarcasm. You're the one in trouble here. 
I don't know what you think you're trying to prove, but you're about to learn a hard lesson. He raised a hand and shoved her again, harder this time, pressing her shoulder against the car, his face mere inches from hers. His breath was hot against her skin, his voice a low growl. You're in my territory now, lady, and I don't take kindly to people disrespecting me. Anastasia's hand clenched at her side, her fingers itching to fight back. She was trained in self-defense and more than capable of defending herself, but she knew she needed to handle this carefully. She wanted him to expose himself fully, to reveal every ugly aspect of his character, and he was doing exactly that. Tell me something, officer, she said, her voice calm despite the anger boiling inside her. Do you make a habit of bullying people, or am I just lucky? Wilson's jaw clenched, and for a moment she thought he might actually strike her. She could see the rage simmering behind his eyes, the way his fists tightened as if he were barely holding himself back. People like you, he said slowly, his voice dripping with venom, need to be put in their place. You think you can just walk around, acting like you're untouchable. But you're not. Not here. Anastasia's gaze didn't waver. If you think intimidation will work on me, officer, you're sadly mistaken. Wilson sneered, his hand moving from her shoulder to her throat, his grip firm but not yet tight. Maybe I'll arrest you right here, right now, he threatened. Resisting an officer obstruction, maybe even assault. I'm sure I can come up with something to keep you off the streets for a while. Anastasia didn't flinch. She held his gaze, her voice steady. You have no idea who you're dealing with, do you? His eyes flashed with anger, and his grip tightened slightly, just enough to remind her who held the physical advantage. I know exactly who I'm dealing with, he said. A spoiled little woman who thinks she can mouth off to a cop and get away with it. She remained calm, her gaze unwavering. I think it's you who doesn't understand, Officer Wilson. I've spent my entire life standing up to men like you, and I'm not about to stop now. His face darkened, and he shoved her back again, harder this time. She stumbled, catching herself against the car, but her expression didn't change. She could see the frustration mounting in his eyes, the realization that his attempts to intimidate her were failing. You're going to regret this, he snarled, his voice low and dangerous. Anastasia straightened, a slight smile playing at the corners of her mouth. Oh, I think you'll be the one with regrets, officer, especially when this footage goes public. His face contorted in confusion, and then realization dawned. His eyes flicked to her glasses, suspicion flashing across his face. What the hell are you talking about? he demanded, his voice rough. Anastasia's smile widened, and she reached up, tapping the frame of her glasses lightly. Smile, officer. You're on camera. Wilson's face drained of color, and his grip on her loosened slightly as he took a step back, his eyes narrowing. You think you're smart, huh? Recording me without my consent? That's illegal. She shrugged, unfazed. Actually, officer, it's perfectly legal. And I have a feeling your superiors will be very interested in seeing how you treat people on the job. The rage returned to his face, his fists clenching as he took a menacing step toward her. You're going to delete that recording, right now, he growled. Or I'll make sure you regret it. Anastasia held her ground unflinching. Or what, officer? You'll assault me. Go ahead. Give me more evidence. He was visibly shaken, his confidence cracking as he realized the precariousness of his position. For the first time she saw doubt in his eyes, a flicker of uncertainty as he processed the situation. You think you can just walk away from this? He sneered, but there was a note of desperation in his voice. You think you're untouchable? She stepped forward, closing the distance between them, her voice a low, dangerous whisper. Yes, officer. I do. And you'll soon find out why. His hand twitched at his side. 
his expression a mix of anger and frustration. For a moment he looked like he might actually take a swing at her, but then he stepped back, his face twisting in anger and humiliation as he realized he had lost. Anastasia didn't move, didn't break eye contact. She stood tall, unyielding, watching as he struggled to contain his fury. This isn't over, he spat, his voice thick with resentment. I'll make sure you pay for this. She raised an eyebrow, unimpressed. Is that so? Well, I look forward to seeing you try. With one final glare, he turned and stormed away, his fists clenched, his posture tense. She watched him go, her heart pounding, a sense of victory filling her chest. She had stood her ground, exposed his true nature, and captured everything on camera. This was exactly the evidence she needed to bring him down, to show the world the corruption festering within the police force. As she climbed back into her car, she took a deep breath, steadying herself. She knew this was just the beginning, that Wilson wouldn't let this go easily. But she was ready. She had prepared for this moment, planned for it meticulously, and now she had what she needed. Anastasia drove away, her mind racing with the possibilities, the next steps in her plan unfolding before her like pieces on a chessboard. Officer Wilson thought he was invincible, that he could treat people however he wanted without consequences, but he was about to learn a harsh lesson, one that would echo far beyond the streets of this neighborhood. She glanced at her reflection in the rearview mirror, a satisfied smile playing at the corners of her mouth. This was her territory now, and she was just getting started. Anastasia kept her calm demeanor, even though the anger in her chest burned hotter with every word Wilson spat at her. He had gone from smug intimidation to barely restrained aggression, his body language screaming hostility. It was clear that he wasn't going to let her leave unscathed, not now. Not after her calm responses had chipped away at his pride. The man in front of her was used to absolute control, and her defiance struck a nerve he couldn't tolerate. Wilson leaned in, towering over her as he sneered, You think you're untouchable? Because you've got money and that smug look on your face. He narrowed his eyes, his lips curling in disdain. People like you don't belong here, and I don't like it when people try to act above the law. Anastasia met his gaze with an unflinching calm, feeling the heat of his anger radiate off him. The law, she replied coolly. Officer, you don't even respect the badge you wear. You're not here to uphold the law. You're here to satisfy your ego. His face darkened, and his fingers twitched at his side. For a brief moment, she thought he might pull back, might try to regain control over his emotions. But then, without warning, Wilson's hand shot out, gripping her arm and yanking her forward. His fingers dug into her shoulder, and she felt a sharp pain as he squeezed harder than necessary. The strength of his grip was startling, even painful. You really think you're someone special, huh? He hissed, his face inches from hers. I don't care who you are. Around here I'm in charge. And people like you, you do as you're told. Anastasia tried to twist free, but his grip only tightened. He yanked her closer, so close she could feel his breath on her face, hot and angry. Let go of me, she said, her voice low but unwavering. She met his gaze and her eyes were filled with a warning. Wilson only smirked, his grip tightening further. Or what? You think you're going to scare me with those big words? He laughed. A mocking, ugly sound. You don't fool me. I know your type. You think you can just walk in here, act like you're untouchable, like you're above the rest of us. He suddenly released her shoulder. But before she could react, he shoved her back hard enough that she stumbled against the car. She barely caught herself, one hand bracing against the metal. Her shoulder throbbed where he'd gripped it, but she refused to let the pain show on her face. Instead, she straightened, her expression calm but her eyes blazing. 
That's enough, officer, she said, her voice falder than ice. You're only making this worse for yourself. He sneered, taking a menacing step forward. Worse for me, he mocked. I'm not the one in trouble here. You think I don't know what you're up to? You think I can't see right through you? She didn't back down, even as he closed the distance between them again. If you think threats will work on me, you're wrong. Wilson let out a humorless laugh. Oh, I don't need to threaten you. You're already in over your head, lady. And you're about to find out just what happens when you mess with people like me. The warning in his voice was clear, but she refused to look away. She stood her ground, her gaze steady. Then show me, she said, her voice low. Show me what you think you're capable of. He smirked clearly pleased with what he assumed was her submission. But his expression quickly changed as she raised her hand and flicked her glasses, tapping them twice a gesture so subtle he barely noticed it. Wilson's smirk wavered, suspicion flashing across his face. What was that? he demanded, his eyes narrowing. Anastasia's lips curved into a faint smile. Smile, officer, she said quietly. You're on camera. For a split second, he looked stunned, his gaze darting to her glasses as realization dawned, his face flushed with anger. You think you're clever, don't you? He spat, his voice a harsh whisper, recording me without my permission. That's illegal. She shrugged, keeping her expression neutral. Actually, officer, it's perfectly legal in a public space and I think you'll find this recording will hold up very well if it ever comes to that. The fury in his eyes was undeniable, and she could see the muscles in his jaw tightening as he tried to rein in his rage. But his restraint was short-lived. With a sudden vicious motion, he raised his arm and brought it down in a shove, hitting her shoulder so hard that she stumbled back again, nearly falling to the ground. Delate it, he growled, his voice laced with menace. Right now. She took a step back, her hand reaching up to touch her shoulder, where the impact had left a dull ache. Her voice was steady, cold as steel. Or what? You'll attack me again. Her eyes flashed with defiance. Go ahead, give me more evidence. The challenge in her voice seemed to snap something inside him. His face contorted with rage, and he lunged toward her, his fist raised as if he intended to silence her with brute force. But this time she was ready. As he swung, she moved with a swift, practiced motion, sidestepping his attack and grabbing his arm in one fluid movement. Her fingers wrapped around his wrist, and before he could react, she twisted his arm behind his back, forcing him off balance. He let out a grunt of pain, stumbling forward as she tightened her grip, holding him in a position of vulnerability. What the he sputtered, struggling against her hold, but her grip was unyielding, her movements precise and controlled. You wanted to teach me a lesson, didn't you, officer? She whispered in his ear, her tone calm but filled with a quiet intensity. Consider this yours. With a swift movement, she released him, pushing him forward with just enough force to send him staggering. He barely managed to catch himself, turning back to face her, his face flushed with humiliation and fury. You, you're going to regret this, he snarled, his voice shaking with barely restrained rage. But Anastasia didn't flinch. She stood tall, meeting his gaze with an unflinching calm. No, officer. I think you're the one who's going to have regrets. For a moment he just stood there, breathing heavily, his fists clenched at his sides. She could see the confusion and anger swirling in his eyes, the realization that he'd underestimated her in ways he couldn't even begin to understand. But his ego wouldn't allow him to back down. He took a menacing step toward her, his voice a low, dangerous growl. You think you can get away with this? He hissed. You think your money and your little recordings are going to protect you? Anastasia met his gaze, unyielding. I don't need protection, officer. Not from you. 
The defiance in her voice seemed to shake him, his bravado faltering for just a moment. But then, with a final, hateful glare, he turned and stormed away, his footsteps heavy with frustration and humiliation. Anastasia watched him go, her heart pounding in her chest, adrenaline still coursing through her veins. As she stood there, catching her breath, she felt a surge of satisfaction. Wilson had shown his true colors, and she'd captured every second of it. She had the evidence she needed, and now she had something else of victory, a moment where she'd stood her ground and shown him that he couldn't imitate her. Anastasia took a deep breath, steadying herself as she turned back to her car. This was far from over, and she knew Wilson wouldn't let this go easily. But she was ready for whatever came next. She had prepared for this moment, and now, with the evidence she'd gathered and the strength she'd shown, she knew she could see this mission through to the end. She glanced at her reflection in the car window, a faint smile playing on her lips. She had faced him, stood up to him, and come out stronger. And as she climbed into the driver's seat, she felt a renewed sense of determination. Officer Wilson thought he was invincible, thought he could intimidate her and walk away unscathed, but he was wrong. This was just the beginning, and she was ready for whatever came next. The press conference had sent shockwaves through the city, and Anastasia's revelations about Officer Wilson's conduct were the talk of the town. For days, news channels aired segments on police misconduct, public forums buzzed with debates, and the public, already aware of systemic issues, now had a face and a name to associate with the corruption. But Anastasia knew this was only the start of what would become a heated and dangerous battle. As expected, Wilson didn't take this public exposure quietly. Not only did he refute all accusations, but he also accused Anastasia of manipulating facts and running a smear campaign against him. Several officers in the department issued statements in his defense, claiming Anastasia's accusations were baseless and that she had twisted the narrative for her own gain. It was clear Wilson was doubling down, attempting to rally support within the department to deflect blame. But Anastasia was ready. The evidence she had on him was airtight. She and her team had meticulously built a case with video footage, witness testimonies, and documented records of abuse spanning years. She had enough to expose him and the corrupt network protecting him. Then, one evening, as she reviewed the next steps with her team, her phone buzzed with a notification. It was a news alert from a local channel. The headline read, Anastasia Gray accused of criminal hacking and unauthorized surveillance. She felt a rush of shock and anger as she clicked the link, her eyes scanning the article that aid out claims of Anastasia using illegal tactics to gather information on Officer Wilson. The story cited an anonymous source, claiming she had overstepped legal boundaries, painting her as a vigilante who had taken justice into her own hands. Anastasia's fingers tightened around her phone. She could already see Wilson's hand in this. He was trying to turn the tables, to discredit her in any way possible. She knew this was only the beginning, that he would stop at nothing to protect his own reputation, even if it meant lying to the public. An hour later, as the team gathered to discuss damage control, Jordan leaned in, his voice low. They're going to try to turn you into the villain. Wilson's got connections in the media, and he's pulling every string he has. Anastasia nodded, feeling the tension in her body like a wire pulled too tight. Let them try. We have the truth on our side. Jordan frowned, his gaze concerned. We do, but you know how the public is. If they keep hammering this vigilante narrative, people might start to believe it. Anastasia sighed, nodding in agreement. We'll have to stay a step ahead of them. Make it clear that everything we did was within the bounds of the law. 
She looked at her team, determination hardening her voice. Prepare a statement for tomorrow. I'm going to fight this head on. The next morning, Anastasia held another press conference, addressing the accusations directly. She spoke with unshakable confidence, laying out the facts of her investigation, the legality of her methods, and the documentation she had to prove that every step she'd taken was within her rights. She emphasized her dedication to transparency and her commitment to justice, directly challenging Wilson's narrative. Her words had an impact. Journalists nodded, asking pointed questions about Wilson's conduct and his department's history. But she could sense the shift. Some people were beginning to question her motives, to wonder if she was as clean as she claimed to be. The seeds of doubt Wilson had planted were starting to take root in the public mind. After the conference, as she returned to her office, she received a text message from an unknown number. The message was simple but chilling. Stay out of this, or you'll regret it. She stared at the screen, her jaw tightening. This was no empty threat. Wilson and his allies were willing to go to any length to silence her. And now, it seemed they weren't content with just a smear campaign. That night, as Anastasia reviewed her files, she heard the faint sound of glass shattering. Her heart jumped, and she quickly moved to the nearest window. There, in the dim glow of the streetlight, she saw the unmistakable silhouette of a man near her car, his face obscured by a hood. He glanced up, meeting her gaze for a split second before turning and disappearing into the darkness. Anastasia's pulse quickened. She rushed outside, finding her car window smashed and a crude note left on the driver's seat. You've been warned. She took a steadying breath, the anger and frustration boiling in her chest. They were escalating their tactics, moving from words to physical intimidation. But she knew one thing for certain, they were running scared. She snapped a photo of the damage in the note, forwarding it to her team. They're desperate, she typed in the message. This is just the beginning. The next morning, she filed a police report on the vandalism, knowing full well it wouldn't go far. She could almost feel the skepticism from the officer taking her statement, his expression stony as he jotted down her words. He clearly wasn't interested in helping her. It was obvious where his loyalties lay. When she returned to the office, Jordan was waiting for her, his face pale. Anastasia, you're not going to like this, he said, leading her to his desk. On the screen was a document, an arrest warrant with her name on it. Her stomach dropped as she read the charges, illegal surveillance, obstruction of justice, harassment. She felt a sickening realization as it hit her Wilson was using his connections to turn the law against her, framing her as the criminal. This is a setup, she murmured, her mind racing. They're trying to paint me as the villain. Jordan's expression was grim. We can fight this, but it's going to be an uphill battle. They've got resources, and they're using every one of them. Anastasia took a deep breath, centering herself. She couldn't let this shake her. If they want to play dirty, so be it. We'll fight them with the truth. She turned to Jordan, her voice filled with resolve. Contact our legal team. We're going to need every ally we have. Over the next few days, Anastasia and her team launched a counterattack. She filed motions to dismiss the charges, presenting evidence of her investigation's legality while her lawyers worked tirelessly to dismantle the accusations one by one. But she could feel the strain. The press hounded her, questioning her every move, and the constant scrutiny weighed on her. Wilson was determined to wear her down, and he was succeeding. The tension reached a breaking point one evening when she returned to her apartment to find her door slightly ajar. Her pulse quickened as she carefully pushed it open, stepping inside to see her belongings ransacked. Papers were scattered across the floor, drawers overturned, 
and her laptop was missing. She quickly called the police, but deep down she knew what this was. It wasn't a random burglary, it was a message. They wanted her to know that they could get to her any time. Anywhere. She could feel the anger rising in her, a fire igniting in her chest. They thought they could intimidate her, scare her into submission, but they were wrong. As she picked up her scattered documents, she noticed one of her files a list of names connected to Wilson's misconduct was missing. Her stomach turned as she realized the implications. They were targeting anyone who posed a threat to their network. With a sense of urgency, she called Jordan. They've escalated, she said, her voice tight. They broke into my apartment, took my laptop, some documents. Jordan was silent for a moment. Then he replied, Anastasia, they're getting desperate, but that means we're close. They wouldn't go this far if they didn't know we had the upper hand. She nodded, her resolve hardening. Then let's push harder. We're not stopping until we expose every single one of them. Over the next week, the battle intensified. Wilson's allies within the department and the local government threw everything they had at her lawsuits, media smears and even physical intimidation. Her office was vandalized twice more, her car scratched and dented. But Anastasia refused to back down. She pressed on, knowing that with each day, her case grew stronger. Finally, after weeks of relentless pressure, they struck a breakthrough. Jordan managed to recover some of the deleted files from her stolen laptop, uncovering a trail of corruption that reached even higher than they had anticipated. Bank transactions, email threads, and recorded phone calls all pointing to a web of corrupt officers and officials who had been protecting Wilson and others like him for years. Anastasia felt a rush of vindication as she reviewed the evidence. This was it their smoking gun. With this, they could expose not only Wilson but an entire network of corruption that had plagued the city for decades. But as they prepared to release the findings, she received one final message from Wilson. If you go through with this, I promise you won't live to see the end of it. She stared at the screen, her heart steady, her mind clear. Wilson was a man backed into a corner, desperate and dangerous. But she was prepared. She had taken every precaution, built a wall of security around her and her team. There was nothing he could do to stop her now. The next day, Anastasia filed a formal report with the federal authorities, bypassing the local department entirely. She released her findings to the press, along with the evidence her team had gathered over months of investigation. Within hours, the story broke. Headlines screamed of corruption. Citizens took to the streets in protest, demanding accountability, and Wilson's name became synonymous with disgrace. His allies, fearing for their own careers, quickly distanced themselves, and investigations were launched into the entire department. Anastasia stood tall, watching as the system she had fought so hard against began to crumble. The fight had been grueling, the cost high, but she had won. And Wilson, once untouchable, was now facing a future stripped of power, reputation, and freedom. This was her victory of victory, not only for herself, but for every person who had suffered under the weight of a broken system. The storm of publicity surrounding Officer Wilson's downfall showed no signs of slowing. News outlets across the state, and even some national channels, picked up the story. Anastasia watched as headlines highlighted the layers of corruption within the local police department, how Wilson and his allies had hidden misconduct under a veil of intimidation and manipulation. She should have felt triumphant, but she knew Wilson wouldn't go down quietly. True to form, Wilson fought back in the only way he knew how, aggression. Late one evening, as she reviewed some final documents with her team, she received a call from one of her security contacts. He's coming for you, the voice warned. Wilson was seen leaving his precinct alone, and he looked ready for trouble. Watch your back. 
Anastasia's pulse quickened, but she kept her voice calm. Thank you for the heads up. I'll be ready. Ending the call, she turned to her team. Wilson's on his way here, she announced, her voice steady despite the tension in the room. Jordan, alert security, we're going to handle this by the book. Her team sprang into action, securing the doors and preparing the cameras to capture every angle. They knew this confrontation was coming, but none of them had anticipated it would happen so soon. As she waited, Anastasia's mind raced through everything they had accomplished. She had exposed a corrupt system, stripped Wilson of his power, and forced an investigation that would reshape the department. But she knew this last encounter would be the most dangerous. Wilson had nothing left to lose. Minutes later, the sound of tires screeching outside broke the silence. She watched through the surveillance feed as Wilson stormed out of his car, his face twisted with anger. He strode toward the building, his movements erratic, as if the only thing driving him now was pure rage. She took a steadying breath, straightened her posture, and walked calmly to the front of the office. Her team watched from behind glass doors, ready to assist if needed but giving her space. This was a confrontation she needed to face on her own. Wilson burst into the lobby, his footsteps heavy as he approached her, his face red and his fists clenched. His eyes burned with a mixture of hatred and desperation, his arrogance finally giving way to fear. You, he spat, pointing a shaking finger at her. You think you can ruin me? You think you've won? Anastasia's face remained calm, her voice level as she replied. Officer Wilson, I didn't ruin you. You did that to yourself. I only showed the world who you really are. He let out a bitter laugh, his face twisting with contempt. Who I am? Who do you think you are walking in here, acting like you're better than me? You're nothing, you hear me? Nothing. She tilted her head slightly, her gaze unwavering. I'm someone who believes in justice, Officer Wilson. And right now you're standing here because you know your time is up. Wilson's fist tightened, his knuckles white. You ruined my life, you, you. No, Officer Wilson, she interrupted, her voice calm but sharp. You ruined your own life by abusing your power, by thinking you were untouchable. But the truth is, you were always going to end up here. You just never thought someone would call you out. He took a step closer, his body tense. You think you can just walk away from this? You think your money and your power protect you? She took a measured step forward, closing the space between them, her gaze cold and unyielding. This isn't about money and it's not about power. This is about consequences, Wilson. You created this mess. And now you're going to face it. He sneered, his composure slipping further. I know people, you're not as safe as you think you are. All it takes is one mistake, one little slip up, and everything you've built will come crashing down. Funny, she replied, a faint smile tugging at the corner of her mouth. That's exactly what's happening to you. His face reddened further, his breathing harsh and erratic. He looked around the lobby, as if searching for something, some way to regain control. But Anastasia's calm presence, her unshaken confidence, only seemed to inflame his anger. You think you're so untouchable, he muttered, his voice growing more unstable. But you're just a rich woman with a big mouth. Without that, you're nothing. She took another step forward, her voice a low, dangerous whisper. And you're just a bully with a badge. Without that, you're a coward. For a moment, Wilson seemed to hesitate her words piercing through his anger. But then his face twisted with rage, and he lunged at her, his hands reaching out as if to silence her by force. But Anastasia had prepared for this. With a swift, practiced move, she sidestepped his attack, grabbing his arm and twisting it behind him with precision. He let out a pained grunt, struggling against her hold, but she held firm, her grip unyielding. Enough, Wilson, she said, 
her voice steady. This is over. He fought against her, his breathing heavy and labored. You're going to regret this, he spat, but his voice was weaker now, the fight draining from him. She released him, stepping back as he stumbled forward, clutching his arm. He looked up at her, his face a mask of defeat, his once intimidating presence reduced to nothing more than a desperate broken man. Get out, she said, her voice cold. Your career, your reputation, it's all gone. You have nothing left here. Leave. For a moment he stood there, as if unable to comprehend the reality of his situation. Then, with a final, defeated glare, he turned and walked out of the building, his steps heavy, his shoulders slumped. Anastasia watched him go, a sense of finality settling over her. She had faced him, exposed him, and forced him to confront his own ruin. And now, she had secured a victory not just for herself, but for every person who had suffered at the hands of men like him. As the door closed behind him, her team emerged from the shadows, relief and admiration on their faces. Jordan approached her, a smile of respect in his eyes. You did it, he said quietly. He's done. Anastasia nodded, allowing herself a small, satisfied smile. Yes, and this is just the beginning. She knew there was still work to be done, that the fight for justice was far from over. But today she had won a crucial battle. Wilson's defeat would echo throughout the department, sending a clear message that corruption and abuse would no longer go unpunished. With a deep breath, she turned back to her team, ready to move forward. This was a victory, yes, but it was also a promise. A promise to continue fighting for those who couldn't, to use her influence and resources to bring change where it was needed most. And as she walked back into her office, she knew that no matter the challenges ahead, she was prepared to face them with the same unyielding resolve. The dust settled slowly in the days following Wilson's defeat. The evidence Anastasia had gathered continued to shake the city, sparking renewed conversations about systemic reform and accountability within the police department. Local officials facing pressure from a public outraged by Wilson's actions and her revelations launched a comprehensive internal investigation. Officers who had previously been untouchable were now under scrutiny, and disciplinary actions loomed on the horizon. Anastasia watched all of this unfold from the sidelines, her satisfaction tempered by the awareness that her work was far from over. The fight against corruption wasn't a battle that ended with one man's downfall. It was a complex, ongoing struggle. But her actions had set a powerful precedent. She had proven that even the most deeply ingrained systems of power could be challenged, exposed and changed. One afternoon, she received an official notice from the police commission inviting her to a public forum on police reform. They wanted her to share her insights and contribute to discussions on policy changes that would prevent future abuses of power. Smiling at the invitation, she knew her story had struck a chord. Her experiences had not only shone a light on corruption, but also ignited a genuine desire for reform within the community. At the forum, Anastasia took the stage, standing before a packed room of city officials, community leaders, activists, and members of the public. She spoke eloquently, not only about her own journey, but also about the need for structural changes that would safeguard the rights and dignity of every citizen, regardless of their background. Her words were met with applause, and even the city's mayor approached her afterward, thanking her personally for her bravery and determination. As the forum concluded, Anastasia felt a deep sense of fulfillment. She had gone through a grueling ordeal, faced down forces that had once seemed immovable, and emerged victorious not for her own glory, but for the cause of justice. In the days that followed, the fallout for Wilson was severe. 
the public embarrassment, combined with the undeniable evidence of his misconduct, left him with no choice but to resign from his position. He was stripped of his badge and pension, and an inquiry found grounds to revoke his law enforcement certification entirely, ensuring he would never work in law enforcement again. As his name became synonymous with disgrace, he retreated from the public eye, his power and reputation shattered. Wilson's former allies distanced themselves quickly, fearing association with him would jeopardize their own careers. Some officers resigned, while others were reassigned to positions under stricter supervision. The police department implemented new oversight procedures, including mandatory body cameras, external audits, and sensitivity training. Anastasia knew these measures weren't a cure-all, but they were a strong first step toward genuine change. Meanwhile, her organization continued its work, expanding the project she had started. Her team of analysts and investigators grew as they took on cases in neighboring cities, using the same data-driven approach to identify patterns of abuse and corruption. Anastasia's network of allies within the legal and political communities grew as well, and soon her influence extended beyond her hometown, reaching leaders who admired her resolve and shared her vision for accountability. The case had brought her attention far and wide. Offers came flooding in from organizations and agencies, asking her to consult, to advise on transparency projects, to contribute to policy reform discussions. She chose her partnerships carefully, working only with those who showed a genuine commitment to justice. One evening as she was packing up at her office, Jordan knocked on her door, carrying a newspaper with a headline that caught her eye, Local Business Leader Turns the Tide on Corruption. It was a profile of her journey, recounting her fight against Wilson, the challenges she'd overcome, and the changes she'd sparked. She took the newspaper from him, smiling as she read the words. Looks like you're a bit of a celebrity now, Jordan said with a grin. Anastasia shook her head, laughing softly. Not exactly what I planned when I started this, but it's what you accomplished, he replied, his voice filled with admiration. You didn't just take down a corrupt cop, you inspired people. She nodded, reflecting on how far they'd come. That was always the goal, she said quietly, to make people believe that change is possible. Months passed, and life slowly returned to normal. But Anastasia's presence had left an indelible mark on the community. She remained active in the reform efforts, continuing to advocate for justice, transparency, and accountability in law enforcement. Community members who had once felt powerless now had a voice, rallying around her example, emboldened by the knowledge that even the most powerful institutions could be held accountable. On one sunny afternoon, Anastasia returned to the neighborhood where everything had started. She walked down the same streets where she had faced Wilson that fateful day, the streets now alive with a new energy. People recognized her as she passed, nodding in respect and gratitude. She paused by a mural that had been painted recently on a nearby wall. It depicted a raised fist surrounded by words like justice, integrity, and truth. Beneath it, a small inscription read, For those who stand up, even when it's hard. Anastasia smiled, feeling a surge of pride and humility. This mural wasn't just about her, it was about everyone who had dared to challenge injustice everyone who had joined her in this fight. She had started as one person, but now she was part of a movement, a wave of change that she knew would carry on. She stayed for a few more moments, breathing in the sense of peace that had come over the neighborhood. The battle she had fought was a heavy one, but she had no regrets. Her journey had been long, full of obstacles and moments that had tested her resolve, but she had emerged victorious, knowing she had made a difference. As she turned to leave, she noticed a young girl watching her from across the street, 
her wide eyes filled with admiration. Anastasia smiled and waved, and the girl waved back, her face lighting up with a shy smile. Walking back to her car, Anastasia felt a renewed sense of purpose. She knew there would always be more battles to fight, more injustices to confront, but she was ready. She had proven that justice could prevail, that the right actions could make a difference, no matter how deep the corruption ran. And as she drove away, she carried with her the hope that one day young girls like the one she'd just met would grow up in a world where integrity, fairness and justice weren't ideals to be fought for they were simply the way things were.